Assalamu alaikum and good day to all. My name is Nur Alia binti Roslan and today you'll be joining me in this concise video tutorial of fatigue analysis on break packs and break days by using ANSYS. We will also integrate SOLIDWORKS for the geometry. It looks like you have gained some technical knowledge from the previous presentation by my colleague Muhammad Mujahid. So, without further ado, let us begin. So, firstly, we will open our SOLIDWORKS drawing. So, once it's open, we can see that this is our model. We have two brake pads and also a brake disc as an assembly. So, in total, there are three parts. Now, we can click on File and choose Save As. Make sure that the format is in iGAS. And we'll save the file. Now we should launch our ANSYS workbench. We can see that there is a project schematic which will then be available for the blocks. At the left hand side is a toolbox analysis. So for our project we'll be using static structural analysis, drag and drop. And before I forget let us save first. For static structural analysis, we have engineering data, geometry, model, setup, solution, and also results. Now, we can click on the engineering data. Click on engineering data sources. Find the general materials. Structural steel and also aluminium alloy. So click on the add button as so. So at the material section, we can visualize the SN curve for each materials that is plotted from the number of cycle and also alternating stress in Pascal. At the bottom is the SN curve alternating stress in y-axis and x-axis for cycle. So that was for aluminum alloy and then here is the structural steel. It has a different SN curve. We can always add our own data for SN curve depending on the type of the material. However, ANSYS student is quite limited so we use only general materials. Now, return to Workbench homepage and import geometry from SOLIDWORKS iGAS format file and check. Then right click on model to edit, starting mechanical and here is our model. So at the outline, find geometry. This model consists of three parts, two brake pads and brake discs. Now, we should assign the materials either aluminium alloy or structural steel. We'll be using aluminium alloy for both brake pads and structural steel for the brake disc. So before generating mesh, we should right click to insert method. This allows us to change the meshing method where we will be using tetrahedron. Click on geometry and select all. Later, we can apply. Change the method from automatic to tetrahedron. Then we can proceed to generate mesh. Meshes are then generated on the model as you can see. Now for the boundary conditions, right click on static structural and insert a fixed support and two pressure for left and right indication. Rename pressure 1.1 for left and 1.2 for right. Add bolted connections as fixed support at the wheel stud. Rotate and we can select geometry. 
for the fixed support at 8 faces. One hole has two faces. Hold your control button while clicking to select more than one item. Then apply. So moving on to the pressures, place it at the brake pad surfaces indicating the piston pushing the brake pads to grip the disc. Select geometry and enter 5 MPa magnitude for both sides. Ensure that the pressure are compressing the brake pads to the disc. Apply. And we are done for the first pressure setup. So right click on solutions to insert total deformation equivalent on Mr. Stress, normal elastic strain, add also the stress tool, fatigue tool with life, safety factor and fatigue sensitivity. Add fatigue tool, we should change the mean stress theory to Goodman and we are done for the first analysis. So let us go back to the main workbench, drag and drop another static structural analysis onto model for pressure 2 and the final one for pressure 3. Now we have three blocks of schematic with identical settings up to model. Rename every block with its specific pressure variables. Then we can double click on solution and run the whole system. When everything is checked, we can analyze the results. We can see the assigned materials for each part, the brake disc and also the brake pads. Expand static structural, click on all components and all results are calculated. Click one at a time to see the results. This includes life, safety factor, and also the fatigue sensitivity. However, one of the major concern is the safety factor. For the first pressure, the safety factor is above 1, meaning that the average stress is below allowable stress. For pressure 2, the safety factor is 0 0.68 and 0 0.45 for pressure 3. They are both below 1, where the average stress has exceeded the allowable stress. Save our results by clicking Images and Save to File. And also the animation in MP4 format. And that is how we can obtain as much information from fatigue analysis. So, we have now reached the end of the tutorial. Thank you for your time and have a nice day.